Good evening. My name is Larry Powell. I'm the Director of Business Expansion and Retention for the City of Gardner. Uh, it is a, the uh, renamed department. We used to be the Community Development Department. So if you're familiar with that title above the door when you come in the front door of City Hall and you look to your left, it says Community Development and Public Works. So that's where our offices are. Uh, I'm here tonight to just basically go over some of the same things that you've already heard a little bit about on the video, and that is the general building maintenance issues and ADA issues that are ongoing with the current building structure. So we have some slides to show you, and I will talk about some of the issues in the slides, and then I will also mention some other things that we don't particularly have pictures of simply because we would be here till tomorrow morning just looking at individual slides with issues. So first of all, what we have on the top, we have these true views for you. One is the front door, which you've already seen in the video. And just quickly on the front door, this is the only real public access to this building. And as you can see, there's a ramp. And the ramp itself used to be compliant with the ADA requirements. It no longer is. It's still usable. It still works. It's still functional. But it really doesn't meet the current code or ADA requirements as under current federal law. Same thing with the door itself. The door itself is a manual door. So that means somebody has to open the door if somebody's not capable of opening the door, which is not always hard to do, but you have to get the attention of somebody inside to, in order to open the door. Uh, we also, if you have the overview to your right, you're looking at the current parking scenario of the uh, building. There are 28 spaces marked out in that, which includes one ADA space, which, by the way, is the only bright spot. Maybe I should mention this. We only need one by law, and we have one. Uh, and it's right by the front door. Um, what you see are employee parking and police car parking that's there. There really is no general public parking available at this facility. So we have parking issues. And any given day, out of the 28 spaces, there are only about six available public parking spaces during a regular eight-hour shift. And that includes the ADA space, which, of course, only the public uses. We don't park police vehicles or anything in that. The, as you go in that front door, uh, that's OK, we're fine. As you go in that front door, you're in a very small lobby area, which is the public access area that you generally come into. Beyond that public area right there is the rest of the building, and the rest of the building we'll talk about in a minute, but it in and of itself is a very small area. It's, it's congested in the fact that it is so small, and if you have more than four or five people or anybody in any kind of a handicap position with uh, a wheelchair or, or crutches or anything like that, it's, it's a hard room to get around in. Okay, slide. We have a lot of dry rot in this building. There aren't a lot of windows, but those that we have and, and uh, other doorways that are in the building, as you know, it's 50 plus years old. And it's just basically things wear out. So it's just basically a, a picture to show you that. Same thing, we have settling in the building. We have foundation cracks that are really beyond the ability to just stuff something in and repair. We have settling cracks that are causing the building to shift and to move. And this is causing wall cracks to appear in and around the building, which, by the way, also transfers all the way up to the roof. And so you wind up with leakages and problems with that issue. We don't have any pictures of the roof because it wasn't really very safe to get up there. But we do have areas of the building and the roof area that leak. And, and we've patched them, maintained them, but they come back as the building shifts over time. We have a lot of wiring in this building. As you can imagine, it's gone through several transitions. It was a phone building. Then it become a public safety building, and now it's a police department. And as such, changes have occurred, and technology has kind of caught up with this building. We have a lot of issues. The walls really aren't structurally made to get into and out of easily, and so everything winds up being on the surface. It looks kind of ugly, but it works well. And so we have cabling issues and wiring issues throughout the building. Also, the building's electrical system being 50 years old is just, I'm sorry, worn out. It needs to be either totally replaced or we need to put our money into a new structure and, and not try and maintain, continue to maintain this structure. There is an emergency generator for this facility. It's really not very trustworthy. We maintain it. We work on it all the time. Uh, as we test it, it's, uh, its age makes it unreliable for any great length of time. So as an emergency operations center, this doesn't give us a lot of trust sometimes in what we have to try and maintain for the general safety of the public. We do have backups to that particular facility in, a, in a regards to the emergency generator, but um, it's just something that we really need to replace and get on with and get down the road. Slide. 
This is a picture of some of the flooring that's in part of the building. As you can see, these stick down tiles have um, come loose. They are on old asbestos flooring. Uh, that asbestos flooring uh, was originally with the building and of course it's still being maintained. It's not very friable yet, which means it's not coming up or being a health hazard as such. But just knowing it's there, we try and keep it covered with a carpet, which of course makes it less wearable. We don't have to worry about it, but as you can see, we're having issues. Look in the carpet, the glue's worn out, it's coming loose. We stick them back down, they come back up. The right-hand side is a picture of one of the locker rooms. I believe this is the men's room, is that correct, Chief? Yes, this is the men's locker room. Uh, as you can see, it's very small, it's crowded, there's not a lot of storage space. Um, it just is indicative of the type of facility where we've made do. We've cut rooms in half and again in half, so you've got like a quarter of a room doing this and a quarter of a room doing that. It's just, it, it gets to be, I pardon the expression, a rabbit warren a little bit in the building. And as such, we have some safety considerations with interior hallway widths, doors opening into hallways, which makes it kind of hard for you to, if you're going down a hallway, you kind of worry about that door coming open as you go by sometimes. Uh, and it doesn't give you a clear line of exit through most of the building. And this includes our basement area. Slide. Uh, this is a picture to the left. It's just the steps going down to the basement. It's one of the areas that's uh, showing the building shifting. We keep patching it. It keeps coming open. The slide to your right is uh, one of the rooms which has uh, multiple functions. It is a janitor's closet. It is a break room. It is a storage closet. It is an electronics storage area and a couple of other things that you probably really don't want to know about. So we have a stairway going down. This is one of the leaking areas up on the roof area. As you can see, the building has shifted and has knocked the part of the roof loose. And we've got that under control right now, but it is a continual area that gives us issues. Floor area, again, showing the wear and tear on the floor and the uh, where we have mechanical rooms and piping coming through. And it's just um, an indication, again, of how the building has shifted and it's showing its age. This is uh, the last slide, and basically we're looking at the holding tank that we, t or the holding cell that we looked at. You have to forgive me, my old law enforcement days are coming up, and we used to call them holding tanks, so. Uh, as you can see, this one is basically a woven wire cage. It is a temporary facility at best. It is in a work area, so you can imagine if you have someone that you brought in and you have to have them in here, and then you've got to sit at the desk that's on the other side of that little white wall just on the other side of the fence and you're trying to do your reporting and your work and um, they're not being very happy with you at the time. So we really have inadequate facilities for the safety both of the persons that are being incarcerated temporarily and for the workers that have to go on this in a day-to-day -day facility. This is also the meeting room, the work area room where the people come in in the morning, they do shift changes and they do reviews of what's going on for you today. Uh, the picture on the right is uh, basically another picture of the cabling that has to do with electronics. Uh, in the area, and again, it's just, uh, it, it looks a little messy, but it's effective and it does what we need to do. Other than the pictures, I, I talked about a couple of things. I just want to re reiterate them to you. Um, our interior doors and hallways uh, are really ineffective in the fact that they're too narrow and they don't meet the uh, ADA requirements that we need to meet. Um, some of the uh, um, basement offices that we have Again, the interior has one basement stairway that's right by the uh, holding cell, and it goes downstairs. There is another exit which goes outside the basement, but both of them really don't adequately meet today's codes or standards for safe egress out of that basement. In addition, this building, as you can well imagine, if you have the same heating and air conditioning system in it that was there 50 years ago, it's really inadequate, and we have inadequate the proper ventilation for this building. Um, it's not that it has sick building code. I'm sure you remember that term over the years where we used to talk about having sick building code. But this building does have ventilation issues and the types of things that need to be done to it in order to make it adequate. Again, you'd just be replacing everything. You'd really just have to take everything out and put everything back in. And that's really not cost effective. That pretty well sums up the things that we have. Michael has uh, some additional information that I think will dovetail into this to give you some timelines and some other issue indicators of how we would proceed from this point on.